Good afternoon, listeners. This is Jim, the Keys bartender, coming to you from the beautiful Florida Keys. A little breezy today. I think they're talking about like 20, 25, not wind, but it's partly sunny, it's warm, it's beautiful, and it's also Bike Week in Daytona. I don't know if you guys know about Bike Week. Bike Week is uh, a huge gathering down here, especially for people, I guess, when you consider it's a long winter and motorcycles are generally, generally, not in particular items, I'm sure there's some motorcycle, I've seen motorcycles, uh, races on ice before, so you got those study wheels, but this conglomeration, it's bike week, it's kind of like the Sturgis thing, but down in, down the Keys way, the Keys way, the Florida way, in Daytona, so we got Lots and lots. I don't even want to speculate how many people are out there riding. But when there are a lot of motorcycles in Florida, or additional motorcycles in Florida, there are a lot of motorcycles in the Florida Keys. Because overseas highway that travels the length of the Keys, the all 126 miles, if you want to say 126 miles, that's right from where you come off the mainland. But is is just visually stunning, especially for someone on a motorcycle. It's very, I guess, it's very difficult too. But with all those motorcycles down here, you have people commenting about it. We also get a lot of posts on our social media about motorcycle safety, about how people should uh, be careful about motorcycles now. In every circumstances, we should always be cognizant of who's on the road, especially smaller vehicles, such as motorcycles. We get a lot of those three-wheeler vehicles that come in, the the, the two front wheels, the one rear wheel, the, um, the reverse tricycles. I don't even know what to call them. They used to be called, they were called spiders before. They were uh, all different types of them, but... When you're riding down the road, you get blind spots all the time. Not all the cars are equipped with blind spot uh, blind spot detectors, and not everyone, because of the speed of traffic, how the uh, gap changes where you are. So you got to be really careful how you make your turns. The people here are, uh, on the parts of the highway that are separated are our uh, overseas highway that's separated by a median strip. Sometimes people will be in the right lane and they'll try to make a left turn across the lane to the left of them. And if they're not paying attention, they can do that in front of a, a you know a smaller vehicle, motorcycle. It's very dangerous how people merge, not paying attention, not seeing everything around them. And let me say, motorcyclists are in general and predominantly very safe riders, very careful. They realize that they have to make themselves seen. They got to be, uh, most of them, uh, especially the guys that ride down and guys and ladies that ride down with the Harleys and stuff, they ride down in groups. They, uh, they don't. You don't know, see a lot of them changing lanes and things like that, doing anything crazy, because that responsibility goes both ways when it comes to motorcycle safety. Okay? And we have a tendency when you see somebody making egregious mistakes, egregious mistakes or, or behaviors, we have a tendency to inflate their numbers. So if less than 2% of motorcyclists are the ones that are doing the bad things, the things that are unsafe, we have a tendency to mark all motorcycle riders as people that behave that way. So it's important not to notice, uh, not to overstate the safety precautions we should take and that motorcyclists should take. Now, that being said, some of the most egregious acts I've seen have been done by motorcyclists with um, 
you know, how to, how to behave politely on the road. You've seen them racing down the road, weaving in and out of traffic uh, with little, playing little mind to the speed limit, uh, probably because on a heavy road or some heavily traveled road, they might find that they can easily escape being chased by a law enforcement. And you also have the people that drive up the shoulders when there's, uh, when there's a lot of traffic or traffic jams, they'll drive, they'll split the lanes. And I understand the excuse for that, you know, because a lot of them don't have the coolant systems. And when it's hot, they can't sit and idle for long times. Well understood. Understood. But when people, when they're riding and splitting the lanes, when you split the lane, a lot of times you're looking at the car to the lefty and stuff like that. But if someone's coming up the middle, of the lane, they pretty much, when they're in between ca- cars and making up their own lane, they pretty much gave their gave up their protection of being in that lane. They're not in either lane. So they pretty much forfeited their, any expectation of not being hit. You know, when you are speeding in between cars and splitting, I see it on the highways up there. There's some really egregious behavior by some of these people, and it bugs it, it bugs the, it bugs everyone when they see it, especially because you're sitting in traffic and you see someone on a motorcycle weaving in and out of traffic. Then they said, "Well, you should watch out for me." Well, how the hell are you going to watch out for someone if they're coming up on you seventy miles an hour faster than you're going? If you're doing fifty-five and they're doing one hundred twenty-five. Where's that expectation? Being able to look out. You're not expecting someone when you're traveling down a road close to the speed limit and someone's doubling that speed limit. And I did tell you about something last year on one of my podcasts. There was a guy who hit, he was going so fast that when he hit, broadsided a SUV that was crossing the highway in Key Largo, his motorcycle flipped that vehicle. And they could not find the driver of the motorcycle. uh, There were three dead passengers in the SUV that got flipped and uh, subsequently caught fire. As it turned out, the third passenger was the motorcyclist who embedded themselves inside there. And I've heard people saying, oh, he wasn't speeding and this and that. Well, he had to be speeding because of the physics. If you're going to flip, you're going to have a motorcycle is going to flip over an SUV, it's got to hit it with enough force to overcome the difference in the weight there. So it's a two-way street, and I do realize most motorcyclists are careful, but if you are going double the speed limit, that expectation is, is not there. And if you're caught doing something like that, there should be a severity for that where they actually seize the motorcycle. Keep on seizing our motorcycle, but they keep on speeding like that. I say... You know, no, no traffic ticket. If you're going 50 miles over the speed limit, you know, and you're caught, say, hey, listen, we got you. We got you, and we're going to get your bike and keep the bike and forfeit it over. And you can forfeit it over for people to give them safe driving classes. Right? No disrespect to motorcycle ride. My only de- disrespect is reserved for those who do not observe the rules of the road. That be saying, talk about rules of road, let's talk about the rules of Facebook. Right? Um, I've been using Facebook since 2007. I wasn't very, I think I had a MySpace account before. I wonder if even MySpace is still around. That'd be crazy. What if my profile's still in my space, if I had one? I don't, I, it's so f- long ago that I don't even remember. But there are rules with Facebook. I use it for, I use it a lot for the, the restaurant I work at, posting specials. We set up a page. And on that page, we post the lunch specials. Uh, uh, many times they don't, the rest of the team on, that I work with, they don't, 
post the lunch, uh, lunch special, so it's kind of hit or miss with that. But I use the the pages, the Facebook pages, uh, the, the specialty ones you can set up for your business. I've used them for everything from when I had a delivery company to um, what else did I do? An airport shuttle service. That, that went real, pretty good for a little while until Uber and Lyft made their way down to the Keys. And but now currently I do it for the uh, Keys Bartender podcast and my notary company. And I think it does a world of business for me for a relatively small outlay of effort and no outlay if you don't want for uh, cost. You no, know, you don't have to spend any money for it. But it's a good way. It's kind of like our Facebook is our town square for the 21st century where people can get together depending on the amount of friends they have and how many people they're exposed. I ha- end up I having about 5,000 acquaintances. <laughs> but because of all the companies I did, I accumulated relationships with people online. When I say accumulated, I mean, I just say, hey, there's somebody here I, in Key West and they seem to be relatively popular I'll friend them and this way I can get my word out from whenever I need to advertise what I'm whatever I'm doing right well one of the things recently and the last how many days is it it's going on 12 days the Russian invasion of the Ukraine and the valiant Ukrainian resistance I've been posting a lot about it and in the beginning, it didn't look so hot. And now they're really, you know, it seems like it, it appears as if most of the world is uh, supporting Ukraine. You still have some holdouts. you got like uh, North Korea, China, um, some countries keeping their mouth shut, stuff like that, paying lip service. But there are rules to things that you do, you you or there should be rules because obviously we know Facebook was weaponized by people who uh, wanted to post false news. And I think a lot of listeners is uh, podcast. I'll tell you where my source is from. Uh, you could take it with a grain of salt. I'm not saying it's the absolute God, God honest truth. But from all the sources that I get, unless they're very, there's been a full commitment to passing. Like some people think everything's a lie, that we're living in a matrix. So everything you see, no matter how prevalent, it's fake. Case in point, flat earth people. They'll deny uh, all the space stuff, satellites, moon landings, um, Space programs, International Space Station, billionaires in space, you know, spaceships shaped like penises or whatever, stuff like that. They just have a million things to say. And they say, you're living a lie and the earth is flat. Right? And they can say that. But there's other people, they say when there's a preponderance amount of evidence that it seems to be the predominant fact, such as the Russian invasion of Ukraine. Now, it is apparent on there that most of the people are supporting Ukraine and there's some small holdouts among autocrats and some authoritarian regimes that support Russia, but predominantly the world is siding with the Ukraine. I understand that. I do understand that. But I posted one post. I think it was a 68 or 78 year old woman holding a Kalashnikov automatic rifle saying she was ready to defend. Can And then I had something that I normally characteristically I don't post. It says respond with respect. Okay. And I don't know why I posted that but someone on my feed came out and said they had a strong dislike 
for those kind of posts where they demand a response, which I kind of understand. I kind of understand. It sounds juvenile. People say, hey, if you love God, say amen. If you love God, say amen. Amen. I mean, I, I wanted to get on there and say hallelujah. Because if people say, well, you didn't say amen, you said hallelujah. I said, well, isn't that the same? Or whatever, close to it. Blessings. We say blessings. <laughs> oh, I, I, I'm just the same person that would make a comment about that. So I made this post and the person came up and said, it's juvenile. Uh, it's ridiculous to demand a response. And then I realized, wow, that must really be annoying to people. But then again, I've annoyed people doing things that I thought weren't very annoying. I mean, my sense of humor isn't necessarily for everyone. I do understand that. So this person came up and she starts to get into a conversation. I said, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, but I'm just, it's kind of like an informal poll to see if people are like-minded, if they're being empathetic and all that stuff. And then she came back with, well, I just want to inform you, most of the world is with Ukraine, if you didn't know that already. Hey, she's being a little insulting right there. But I'm not taking the bait. I'm not insulted. But a couple other people seem to respond and saying that's an ignorant comment, stuff like that. And I wouldn't say that. I can understand. So when she said most of the world supports Ukraine, I came back and said, oh, well, uh, I appreciate you telling me that. Thank you very much. And I left it at that. And then she made another response after that. And I think prior to it, I said something like this. I am so sorry that I struck a chord with you. I am sorry I struck a chord with you. Am I sorry that I posted it? No. So I put in there and said, listen, this is what I do. I post on Facebook. Yes, I'm not going to go into the Ukrainian fight. Right now, I'm 58 years old. I'm not going over there. I have a family. I'm not going over to um, fight in Ukraine. Should I? Maybe. Who knows? Right? Maybe Maybe I should uh, you know, get my passport, go over there and volunteer. But uh, that isn't happening. I'm just being truthful because I do have a passport. There is time. I could probably afford... Uh, I could afford a ticket right now, but, and I'm not looking for, I'm not making excuses for it either. Did I? I'm telling you the reasons why it can. I didn't give you one reason why it can't. So yes, I could be a, what would you call those guys? Fair weather friend. Cause I'm over here. It would probably be a lot more, I, what would you call it? If I was sitting in St. Petersburg doing a podcast and saying the things I said, like, fuck Putin, you're an asshole, blah, 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 autocrat, stuff like that. If I did that in St. Petersburg, that would be a much braver thing to do. And if I asked people in Russia to say respect for that 68-year-old woman that's holding the Kalashnikov, people would say that's an empty, shallow thing to say. Because if they say it in Russia, they can go to you can go to jail for fifteen years. Uh, a reporter, that's a new law in Russia, fact. That if you were to call it an invasion or disagree with the state's account of what is going on there, that you'd be liable. Liable of libel laws, and the libel is what the state says. It would consider liable. So, it's interesting, though, that we are at a time when politically, the person I'm disagreeing with and I probably don't have any daylight between our stances. We don't have anything probably be, be disagreeing with those things. Just the approach And I've been in situations where I've gotten angry over things 
that would seem to be like, what would you call petty? Petty differences with someone. When there's huge differences with other people, and even with other people who people I disagree with vehemently, I'm friendly with. I had another friend come up and he was talking, you know, people arguing about gas and the price of gas. And I was saying, you know, in, in retrospect, when you think about gas, it's, it's something, yeah, some people need it for their work and all that stuff or to get the work. And it's very critical, the price of gas. But right now you got these some people with very large appetites for gasoline. People that, if you own a boat, boats gobble gas. If they're out there and you're just decrying it and say, listen, I want to be able to run. Well, I mean, some of these boats, if they own a boat that has four engines on it, four 300 horsepower engines, and some of them have more, some have five. They're going to go through a shitload of gas. It's, It's like... Going on a decent sized ride with a, one of those big boats, you're spending hundreds and hundreds of dollars, if not a thousand, to get fuel. But considering that the boats cost hundreds of thousands of dollars, a half a million to a million dollars, they sometimes they can, you know, maybe they can afford it. Maybe maybe they have, well, they should be able to afford it. If you can buy a million dollar boat, you should be able to buy five dollar a gallon of gas. If you can't, then you are having misappropriation of your personal funds. You should get a boat with fewer engines. Maybe an inboard or a diesel engine. Maybe not have to go 70 miles per hour on the water. Or 70 knots. Or 60 knots. Or 50 knots. Whatever. You always should get yourself an airplane. Well, those airplanes actually go faster over the water than you would in the water. What's the point? But they get in arguments over it. What I mean is that, the, uh, getting back to the point, the point is that when you have a huge appetite for fuel and the price for fuel goes up and your appetite for fuel has a maybe 10% have to do with your work and 90% about your choice in vehicles, yeah, you need a truck. You need a big truck. You need a, a Ford 350 with dual tires on the back. And you got the big coal roller smokestacks behind your cab. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. Yes, yeah, some of you need it. Some of you need the big truck. You need to pull your boat. You need to pull your boat around. Right? No. Not everyone. I I have I have a on just general knowledge, not everyone needs a truck for work. Some people need vans, some people need smaller trucks. And if you have a coal roller thing on it, you're using spent you're using incomplete combusted fuel to express a feeling you have by rolling coal, meaning throwing black smoke up behind it, then you made your statement, and your statement should not be about the cost of the fuel because you're just like tearing up twenty dollar bills. So what's the point? If you're if you're you know spraying incomplete combustion all over the God's creation. I understand with Facebook and people get angry and stuff like that. I used to get angry with people say, can I get an amen? Give me an amen. So, and I told you, blessings and amen and hallelujah and all that stuff. I get it. I get it and I understand. Am I going to stop doing it? No. And I get, and I think people get some people, when I get, the, the, I have this gift. I have this gift that when people are slightly pissed off, I have a way to either apologize or if I don't apologize, 
I seem to really get them even more pissed off. So, I, I, I really, I really don't get a lot of joy out of pissing people off. I don't. I don't get. I don't get a joy. Man, my day is not better when your day is worse. I'm not one of those people wearing shirts. I'm not happy until you're unhappy. Nope. Nope. I mean, there's some people that um, only are happy with horrible things. And that me being happy that horrible things aren't happen makes them unhappy. Then, okay, then I'm happy. I can understand that thing. Unless you know, if everything opposite makes them happy, happy, then maybe, yeah, maybe, maybe I would like to make that person unhappy. But I haven't run into a lot of people like that. Speaking of that, so this is a new week. I I'm going to keep on posting. Uh, for the Ukrainian resistance, uh, they are dragging out the Russian invasion, even though Russia is not getting the full news over there. Fortunately, there's probably still people with access to the Internet. There's YouTube channels. There's Russian soldiers, even though there's express um, I think where the Ukrainians are allowing Russian soldiers to call their mothers and families back in Russia. I think that's an express, uh, expressly against the Geneva Convention on how to treat prisoners. But it's a good tactic too. Well, there's, if you're considering the, the litany of bad things happening right now, the Russians are way ahead, way ahead in uh, the bad acts department. First, the invasion then the target of the civilian, and then the ceasefires that are incomplete. So when they start evacuating uh, civilians, they the Russian forces are attacking the evacuating civilians. And that's explicitly against a ceasefire. And now it's like the Russians are saying, yeah, we're going to have humanitarian ceasefires, uh, humanitarian ceasefire corridors. I think whatever their term, but it's areas where people can cross without fear of being attacked. As long as there's civilians, there's no uh, military involved in that. But the Russians are saying these reports that they will allow that the uh, aid corridors to open up, but the civilians can only evacuate to Belarus or to uh, Russia, which I really don't understand. That means they're going to attack people going into Hungary, Moldova, Slovakia. They're not really on the western border yet with Poland, so I, I imagine that threat isn't there. But and uh, I guess they, I mean, whatever their reason would be for that. But uh, right now, they the Russians have not fulfilled any, or Putin hasn't fulfilled any of the truces or the ceasefires. But as we speak, the Ukrainian resistance goes on. More weapons are finding their way into uh, Ukrainian hands from the West. More Stinger missiles, more uh, Javelin anti-tank missiles, and f- older uh, fighter jets from our uh, European allies, all right? or the newer members of NATO. Uh, With uh, the Americans, people say, well, why does the U.S. have to approve of the Polish uh, sending of fighter craft to the Ukrainians? Or how allowing the Ukrainian pilots to pick it up and fly them into Ukrainian territory? It's because uh, the U.S. is going to backfill those orders with more... American jets. I don't know if they're going to temporarily maybe reposition American jets to replace the jets the Polish are getting rid of and for the future purchase. There's a purchase agreement for American fighter jets in Poland. So there's there was an agreement saying, listen, if you give those jets, we're going to provide you with more coverage, more uh, anti-air defense and temporary coverage may be under a blanket of U.S. Uh, forces. So 
it, it's, it sounds like it's going to be a long haul. Putin's not going to give up. He just wants, I guess he wants the capitulation. Recently he just said he doesn't see a future of a independent Ukrainian nation state. That's a scary thing. That's saying, well, we don't believe that Ukraine's, I don't believe Ukraine's going to exist. So he doesn't, why would someone negotiate with a, a country that they don't believe is a country any, or will be a country for long? So I don't see the scenario where he winds up in a better place at the end or Putin winds up in a better place in the end. So, and I'm sure you're tired of hearing it, but I'm not going to ignore it. And I apologize for saying, I realize most of you do support the Ukraine. I, I do have people that come in and uh, they are siding with Russia. Yeah, most of the world does, but there are some people uh, that are siding with the aggressors right now. And we hope they have a change of heart. I'd like to thank you for listening. I'd like to say hi to all my friends all around the country, around the world. And I've been trying to get my nephew, who's from Poland, onto the, but he's not very comfortable with his English. I told him, I said, you should listen to my English a lot more. Because you'll know that I'm not that good in the spoken language of my birth. But it doesn't stop me. 591 episodes in. Or even more. Well, thank you very much. Have a great day. I'll be back. I think I'll be back tomorrow. If not tomorrow, Wednesday. I will be back tomorrow. Oh, yeah. What is that? I'll talk to you later.